The Power of Garlic Garlic is one of the world's oldest cultivated herbs. The history of garlic dates back over 6,000 years, and its healing abilities have been recognized and used for centuries by many civilizations. Ancient Egyptians worshipped garlic. It was believed that chewing garlic would create a radius of foul odor that would protect them from being attacked by the evil spirits during night journeys. Whole preserved cloves of garlic were found in the tomb of Tutankhamun, the pharaoh, which dates to approximately 1500 BC. Was garlic left in the tomb with a purpose, or was it simply forgotten by careless workmen? The earliest references indicate that garlic was consumed in large quantities by the workers that built the Egyptian pyramids. Even in those ancient times, garlic was well known for its disease-fighting effects and its ability to provide more strength and increase work capacity. According to the Codex Ebers Papyrus, an Egyptian compilation of medical texts dated about 1550 BC, garlic was used to treat abnormal growths, abscesses, circulatory disorders, general malaise, infestations with insects and parasites, bronchial pulmonary conditions. The ancient Greeks also used garlic to boost strength and prevent diseases. Hippocrates, the ancient Greek known as the father of medicine, prescribed garlic for a variety of conditions around 400 BC. It was used to treat wounds, fight infection, cure leprosy, and ease digestive disorders. Garlic was also used to treat heart problems, to aid in the release of the placenta for abdominal growths, especially uterine. There is evidence that during the oldest Olympic Games, which originated in Greece, garlic was fed to athletes before they competed. In ancient Greece, garlic was treated as perhaps one of the earliest performance-enhancing agents. The ancient Romans believed that garlic could provide strength and endurance. Garlic was regularly fed to soldiers and sailors and perceived as a form of medicine by the leading Roman doctors. After Rome became a leading power, it adopted the medical knowledge of the Greeks. The head of Roman medicine, the Greek Dioscorides, recommended garlic as an efficient artery cleanser, centuries before it was discovered that garlic may have a beneficial impact on the cardiovascular system. Romans also used garlic for digestive disorders as a treatment from animal bites, seizures, and arthritis. In Russia, garlic was also known since ancient times. In the manuscripts of the 17 to 18 centuries, garlic is mentioned multiple times, which allows it to be attributed to the most used of the plants. For a long time, garlic was used for treating respiratory tract diseases, which is why Russian physicians often call garlic Russian penicillin. Russian sailors of the past used to load on board whole barrels of garlic, using it as a treatment for scurvy which was known as the most common sailor's disease. During the First and Second World Wars, Russian soldiers used garlic to treat wounds and prevent the development of infections. Garlic was also mentioned by many ancient Russian herbalists, where it was recommended as a remedy from insomnia, rheumatism, hypertension, malaria, sore throat, colds, gout, kidney stones, gastrointestinal diseases, edema, flatulence, corns, and psoriasis. In England, garlic was used for toothache, constipation, smallpox, rheumatism, intestinal worms, and chronic coughs. Garlic was also widely used as a medicine during the plague outbreak in the 17th century. It is also known that monks chewed on garlic cloves to protect themselves from the plague. The use of garlic goes beyond culinary and medical scope. British and European folk beliefs considered garlic as a substance that could protect against demons, werewolves, and vampires. So what is it in garlic that makes it so special? Scientists now know that most of garlic's health benefits are caused by a compound called allicin. Allicin is a defense mechanism of garlic and is formed when a garlic clove is chopped, crushed, or chewed. Alanase is an enzyme that interacts with alleine to form allicin. Allicin is the main ingredient that gives garlic its odor, taste, and powerful medicinal properties. So what do we know about the properties of allicin? 
Let's refer this question to the world's foremost garlic expert and organic chemist, Peter Jostling, who has devoted over 25 years of his life to researching garlic, allicin, and its medicinal properties. So let's take a look at the historical properties of garlic that can be directly attributable to allicin. First of all, we know that the allicin is a great antibacterial. It can kill both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria with relative ease, including some of the most pernicious bacteria known to man, like MRSA or MRSA. We also know that allicin is a great antiviral. Um, my own study, which we'll talk about later, proves that it can kill the common cold virus very easily and a number of other very nasty viral infections. We also know that allicin is a great antifungal. In fact, it works better than most of the pharmaceutical drugs because it actually prevents a fungal infection from returning to the body. There's also been a lot of publicity and talk about the anti-cancer benefits of garlic in general. And in America, garlic is regarded as a genuine anti-cancer food. Now, we don't talk much about that uh, because we don't have a lot of data. But what we do know is that when allicin breaks down in the body, some of those compounds have some very interesting anti-cancer activity. What we also know from historical studies from, and from uh, time-worn measurements is that allicin is extremely good at reducing both cholesterol in the blood and looking after your blood pressure levels. And indeed, many garlic products make claims for that around the world. We also know that it's good for people like me. I'm a diabetic, type 1, and we know that stabilised allicin actually reduces blood sugar quite well. And the final thing that we know about garlic, or allicin if you like, is that it can also prevent the fat buildup, particularly in coronary arteries. And we know that if you take a fatty breakfast and take a certain type of garlic extract at the same time, you actually absorb about 30% less fat from that meal. So these are the historical properties attributable to allicin. So I think it's really important that we should have some understanding as to how all the different garlic extracts are actually made and what kind of properties they have and whether they can deliver any of this incredibly useful allicin material. So if we start with the first um, compound that was invented, if you like, and that's garlic oil. Now these are very popular the world over and what they do is they take their fresh garlic and they put it into a huge flask and they distill over the essential oil of garlic. This was done by a famous German chemist many, many years ago. And basically what happens is that process, of course, destroys all of the available allicin because that distillation process unites the alleine and the alinase. That releases allicin. The allicin then degrades during that process and with garlic oil capsules, you end up with absolutely no allicin potential whatsoever, but they do contain lots and lots of sulfur compounds from garlic. That means they have some benefits on the heart and circulatory system, although not much data has been produced. The second group are what are known as aged garlic extracts. Now, what they do is very clever. They take their fresh garlic and they put it into a huge big vat or tank of vegetable oil and they allow it to age over a period of about 18 months. Now you know full well that if you leave garlic in your cupboard for more than two or three months it will basically become hollow and disappear. That means that what's happened is the alanase and the alleine have reacted with each other, the allicin has been destroyed and turned into other sulfur compounds. So when you analyze an aged garlic extract, which are very popular around the world, you end up with huge amounts of sulfur compounds, which have some interesting properties, but absolutely no allicin whatsoever. The third group are the garlic powders. Now these are quite interesting in that they basically dehydrate fresh garlic, and that takes all of the water out. Remember, garlic is mostly water anyway and you end up with a garlic powder that contains 
alleine and alanase. Now, when that is rehydrated, then you will release tiny, tiny amounts of allicin. And you know that when you take a garlic powder, for example, at breakfast time on your eggs, you can taste that flavor of garlic. That's the allicin being released. Now, what the garlic powder companies do is they protect that powder from your stomach acid. So they coat it in things like sugar, shellac, titanium dioxide, magnesium stearate. These are all uh, compounds that are called excipients, and that is done deliberately to protect the garlic powder from being attacked by your stomach acid. And unfortunately, what happens is, as you swallow those capsules or tablets, they get into your stomach. Your stomach acid basically breaks them open anyway, and completely and irreversibly destroys all of the available alanase enzyme in that powder, and that means you do not generate any allicin whatsoever. So, a recent development are the stabilized allicin powder extracts. Now, these are very special in that the way they are produced is a patented technique, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, but basically they produce real allicin in powder form. That can be then put into a capsule, dosed into your body, and as they get into the stomach, there's no enzyme there, they are not destroyed by stomach acid, and therefore they get to work immediately, and that's why we know that stabilized allicin powder extracts are very good antiviral agents, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitical, and they can also reduce cholesterol and blood pressure. Now we know that allicin is an organosulfur compound obtained from garlic, but very few garlic supplements contain allicin. Stabilized allicin of the highest quality can be found in the products like allicy and allicin C. For more information, visit www.garlicwise.com or www.garlicwise.co.uk. So I'm often asked, how did we manage to stabilize allicin? Well, I led a team of chemists and chemical engineers who basically developed a technique for releasing the allicin from fresh garlic, diluting it down with water, and that basically means that you dilute the allicin and fortunately, the stability goes up as you do that. So that means that you end up with a liquid stabilized allicin, and that is incredibly biologically active. So we basically tried lots of different solvents, but water turned out to be the best one, um, and that's because the allicin is soluble in water quite easily. So you end up with a liquid that is very biologically active, in other words, it can kill fungus, virus, and bacteria, and that means that you can then go on and dry it and basically start uh, clinical studies to prove that it actually has some clinical activity in both uh, humans and animals. Peter has also conducted a gold standard 12-week double-blind placebo-controlled study on the role of allicin in the treatment and prevention of the common cold. And here is what he has to say. So I'm very proud that my double-blind placebo-controlled study has now become a gold standard in the garlic world, with many, many different researchers quoting from it over the past 10 or 15 years. It was double-blind, placebo-controlled, and the reason we picked the common cold is because there are more than 200 different types of common cold virus, and it's estimated that every individual in the Western world will suffer on average between two to three colds per year. Now, me personally, I haven't had a cold for many, many years, but some people get them all the time. And the important thing to understand is the viruses change every year, so vaccinations are not always able to cope with whichever virus is circulating at the time. And of course, as we all know, in recent times, rhinoviruses and now coronaviruses have become incredibly difficult to treat and even a common cold or the flu, we can lose thousands of individuals every year. So the idea behind the study was to try and prove whether a stabilized allicin extract could prevent common cold infections. 
And when we look at the total number of colds over a 12-week period in this study, there were 24 in the active group, i.e. the people that took the Allison extract, but in the placebo group, there were 65 colds in total. So that means that you are immediately 60% less likely to catch a common cold if you take just one capsule a day of a stabilized allicin extract. The other really important data that came from the study, not surprisingly perhaps, is that the number of days that you were um, affected with symptoms like coughing, sneezing, runny nose, blocked, blocked nose, uh, headache, that kind of thing, common cold symptoms, in the placebo group, these lasted for on average 5.01 days. But in the active group, if you did catch a cold and you kept taking one capsule a day, they got better within just 1.52 days. So you recovered much faster, even if you were unlucky enough to catch a cold in the active group. And the third piece of information that really made this a gold standard study is that when we looked at the number of repeat infections over a 12-week period, in the active group there were just two repeat infections, but in the placebo group there were 16 repeat infections. So what this means is that the stabilized Allison extract not only kills virus, but it also protects you from catching another viral infection. So that's why it's now seen as the only properly controlled study on a garlic extract and that's why it's quoted around the world as being the only evidence we really have to show that certain types of garlic extract provided they contain stabilized allicin will prevent and treat the common cold virus. Allicin is also known as nature's antibiotic based on its broad spectrum of activity. It is completely natural, safe and effective. According to the garlic expert Peter Jostling, it is not only an effective antifungal and antiviral, but it has also demonstrated strong antibacterial activity. So, the stabilized allicin extract is not only a good antiviral, but it's also a fantastic antibacterial. We were lucky to find that the biological activity of allicin can kill some of the worst bacteria known to man. Things like Streptococcus, which of course cause sore throats, they are very easily killed by Allicin at just 16 parts per million. Staphylococcus aureus, which is one of the most pernicious bacterial infections in the world, we'll talk about that again in a minute, is also killed at just 16 parts per million Allicin. Why is that important? Well, in capsules like this, we deliver on average around about 250 parts per million allicin from every capsule. That means that if you get the dose right and you dose for long enough, you will kill out these bacterial infections very, very easily. We can also look at things that cause stomach upsets and diarrhea, very commonly uh, underreported around the world. And this is bacteria like E. coli, Listeria and Salmonella. They are found when you go on holiday and you uh, take on a diet that perhaps you don't know very well and they can cause vicious diarrhea and really do upset your stomach uh, and that means that you can kill them out by taking a big dose of allicin very very quickly and very very easily. Now Staphylococcus aureus is probably one of the most common bacteria in the world. It's estimated that one in three people across the planet carry Staphylococcus aureus up here in their nasal cavity. Now that's fine, it likes you and you like it, but unfortunately Staphylococcus has the ability to actually migrate down onto your body and then change its shape and structure. And that means that it can then become multi-drug resistant and can potentially cause some very, very serious problems. So it's what's known as a superbug. And you know, the publicity over the last 10 or 15 years has been brutal about how many people are killed by superbug infections that the pharmaceutical industry just cannot treat. Do you know what? There is a, uh, quite a few strains now of MRSA that can be killed by only three compounds. One is called vancomycin, 
which is a very, very, very toxic antibiotic. The second is a bacterial cream called Batraban, which unfortunately is something like 75% resistant, so most people won't be able to get any benefit from it. And the third agent that can kill all of these strains of MRSA, or MRSA as it's often known, stabilised Allison. That's absolutely right. And our tests over the last 10 years on more than 300 different strains of uh, MRSA and MSSA, methicillin sensitive Staph aureus, have shown that every single strain is completely killed by Allison. If you would like to learn more about garlic, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.